It's story time with Father David Heeman. Where were you on 9-11? Everyone can pretty much tell you where they were at. Um, I was with a good friend of mine, Monsignor Michael Harras, and we were in Assisi, Italy, when the built towers uh, were being hit by the planes. And I remember we were at the tomb of St. Francis, praying for world peace of all things. And um, I remember as we walked through the city after eating at uh, La Stala, uh, after walking in the city, we, could, we were hearing people uh, say things such as, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be a World War III. And of course, it's terrible. It's just in the patria mia. We heard the Italians. Oh, this is Nick so good. We heard Germans. We heard, oh no, it's going to be an awful, awful affair for the whole world. And we did, what's going on? What's going on? Then we, of course, discovered that the towers were being flown into. Um, it was very terrifying. And we were ready to come home after two weeks, but we were stranded seven more days over there. And it really wasn't that much fun because we wanted to get home and it was just an upsetting thing. Anyway, on our way over, we met this wonderful airline attendant uh, by the name of Eileen. Uh, she was an older attendant, but very seasoned and just awesome. And we really hit it off with her, talking with her, laughing with her. I think Monsignor gave her a chocolate uh, candy bar, which uh, kind of won her over right away. Anyway, to make a long story short, we finally uh, got to the day where we could leave Rome and go back to the States. And as we were uh, as we were ascending, you know, you're back and you can feel like a like the, the the G's on your face. You can feel the pressure. You're going up. The planes had a great uh, slant going right up, climbing really quickly. Everybody's supposed to be seated and have their seatbelt for sure at that time. Very dangerous time. Everybody needs to be secure. Well, I was back in 42, row 42. We were like A and B, Monsignor and I. And on the other side of the plane, Eileen was coming down, grabbing the seats. And she goes, Father David, I need to see you right now in the galley. I said, now? Are you kidding me? Just now. So I went back there and, um, and she grabbed my hands and she was shaking like this. She says, we think there's a terrorist on the plane. And, 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 and we're just scared to death. Even the pilot and the co-pilot are worried. And people, there's, there's some panic starting to spread in his, in his area. I go, well, what do you want me to do? Well, he's wearing a Roman collar, and we think that's his disguise. Can you make your way up there and talk to him and see if he's really a terrorist or really a priest? Can you determine that for us? I said, sure. You know me, old Dave, uh, old schmoozer Dave. I just, I, I was at literally grabbing seats because I had to almost pull myself and climb because it was going up. I climbed myself right to where he was, and I came up to him. I go, well, hi, Father. How are you doing? He goes, hello. I said, oh, hey, so what, what are you up to? What are you up to? He goes, I, we're on the same flight, you know, obviously. And um, I said, well, I started, I spent about 20 minutes talking to him about all things theological and priestly. You know, oh, really? So where do you study? Oh, at the Elefantianum. And uh, what was one of your strengths? Catechetical studies. And I go, oh, okay, okay, that's good, you know. Um, and so he said he was... Uh, from uh, India, actually, or, and between India and Pakistan. And um, and so I said, oh, do you know Anthony DeMello? He's an Indian priest, a very famous author. Do you know Father Anthony DeMello? Oh, yes. What did you think of his last book? Uh, what was the name of that again? Oh, Meditations I Love. Um, Meditations I Love. I go, yeah, what do you think of his last book? Oh, I thought it was just ma marvelous. Said, oh, okay, that's good. So I, I then went with Eileen. And uh, we went into another kind of galley area, and I said, I promise you, he absolutely has to be a priest. He knows all this. He knows stuff that other people would not know. And it's very clear to me that he's a priest. She went, oh, thanks be to God. So, uh, and as I was interviewing him, by the way, a lady about five seats ahead said, raised her hand and said, Father, could I see you? I go, sure. So I go up to see her, and she slinked down. She goes, Promise me he's not a terrorist. I said, I promise you. And then I gave her a rosary blessed by Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II. Um, and I said, just pray this, on, you know, just keep this in your hands and pray and you'll calm yourself down, you know. And so Monsignor Michael and I went back in the back, row 42. And as we leveled off and everything kind of calmed down, uh, Eileen came down our aisle. She goes, Monsignor Michael, Father David, come with me now. And we go, I went like, now what? 
it's just, and so she marched us up to first class, um, one A and B, and, uh, and they were feeding us grapes and cheeses. I remember I had a nice little scotch and, and it was just, and it was the most pleasant, uh, wonderful rest of the trip home. Well, I share this story because what would you, how would you react if I told you now in two weeks time, you're gonna have to um, interrogate a potential terrorist uh, and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. You you would just lose sleep. You would have to be pulling out your imodium. You would be crazy nervous, right? Well, the thing is, I would too. And normally I would be. But you know what? God never gives us graces for future imagined troubles. He only gives us graces for today, for the present moment, and more graces than what we need. Normally that would have just terrified me. But at the moment... That Holy Spirit and the grace of God, you know, the spirit that God has given us is no cowardly spirit, but one that makes us strong, loving, and wise. That's from Paul to Timothy. I had absolutely no fear. In fact, was a little fired up about doing it and felt very comfortable doing that. Normally, that would not be for me. So you knew that it was somebody greater than old little old scaredy cat David Heman. Uh, there was a lot of grace going on. I just want you to know there's lots of things that you might be afraid of health concerns, uh, relationship concerns, uh, things in your life that you need to do, you're concerned about. I just want you to know that God loves you and he will give you the courage, he will give you the grace, he'll give you the wisdom, everything you need. Uh, don't worry about future imagined troubles. He's not going to give you graces for those. He'll give you the graces for the here and the now, okay? He's present to you at every moment. So that very personal story is actually not just about me. It's about all of you finding grace and strength and trusting. In the meantime, draw that square in front of you and say, this is a present moment. Be present to God. His name is I am, not I have been or I will be. God's name is I am. He's with you in the present moment. So I pray that the blessing of that God upon you right now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.